Welcome to the High Voltage Light Electric Vehicle Channel. This video is going to be about controllers, or more specifically, what I'd like to see with a controller, because there's all these new controllers coming out now. There's the VEST-based EBMX controller, and I have it on authority that there's at least another two VEST-based controllers coming out. And there's the KO controller. You have ASI, you have Tronics, Tramper. The list of like really, really cool stuff just seems to go on and on and there's more stuff all the time. So it got me thinking, what would be my ideal controller? Because none of these controllers are gonna be perfect. All of them will have design compromises somewhere. So this video is gonna have a look at what I would like to see in a controller. It's not gonna to go too into heavy details about the electronic side of things. It's more of a wish list for the ergonomics and a features point of view. So start off, um, what I'd like to see is a bit more in terms of safety when it comes to making connections to the controllers. So a uh, couple of examples here. Um, I've got like a, a BAT 4000 and we've also got uh, a FAR driver here. And if you look at the terminals on the controllers, they're not recessed into the controller. And the ASI one is uh, a bit better done than the, the far driver one because it has these fins that, that protect the, the terminals there. But if you have a look at the far driver one, they just come, they're just straight out of the back. Um, so you make your connection here and it, it's kind of, uh, kind of exposed. So what I was thinking is that you could design some safety into the product quite easily. And you can see on the screen, very, very rough example here. It's not the full controller or anything, but you can see if you have it molded, you'd be able to insert the wire into the controller and then you could torque it down, lock it into place, and then even put like a little cap or a cover in place over the top. And then you wouldn't have any sort of exposed wires and there'd be no chance of anything sort of connecting between the two or shorting anything out. Another thing, that I'd like to see with the controllers is for them to be fully waterproof. If light electric vehicles are gonna become more mainstream, then they really have to work in all conditions. And having the brains of the vehicle be fully waterproof is kind of a must. Um, I mean, if we look at this vest one here, it's a really brilliant controller. It's very sophisticated. It's very, very compact, but there's no, there's no waterproofing anywhere. Like water can get in the sides down the phase wire connections, it can get in the sides down where the battery is, and it can get in everywhere where there are the communication connections here for things like the hall sensors, throttle, all that kind of stuff. So to make this usable on a light electric vehicle is, is a bit of a pain in the butt really. And I actually, I actually worked on that for quite a bit. I haven't finished this in any way, shape or form, but I designed essentially a box to put the controller in to alleviate some of those concerns. So I was looking at putting gaskets around it, gaskets for the wires, um, a plate here that would uh, marry up all of the different terminals uh, and bring them together. So you just had the five wires coming out, um, a place to have the communication wires, um, additional heat sinking, all that kind of good stuff. Um, but all of this could really be part of the controller itself and then it would be, be much easier to do. Um, I definitely make the waterproofness like fully done from the get-go if, if I was doing doing a control. I'd also um, I'd also like to see the ability to repair the controller built in. I think there's there's far too much stuff that ends up in landfill when it really should be possible to replace something like a FET or a capacitor if they're blown. So it kind of relates a little bit to the waterproofing part. And, and maybe there is a maybe there's a compromise to have where certain areas of controllers are not potted and others are because I, I can see the advantages of potting for some sections, but the more common fail points, maybe there should be access to replace those components or at the very least to be easily able to remove the potting from certain sections so you could service something. The, uh, the most vulnerable time that a controller has, it seems to be the initial battery connection stage when the voltage is connected and you're supposed to use things like anti-spark connectors. And if they're not used, you can end up damaging the controller quite easily. Uh, what I'd like to see is more of a kind of safety backup feature built into the controller. So if a person does make a mistake, right, and they connect to the battery wrong, or maybe the 
anti-spark connector isn't functioning right or it's a bad one, you don't blow the controller or you blow a small piece of the controller. So kind of like with the BBSHD, you have like a nylon gear and that's kind of like the sacrificial part. So if you go too mad with it, you strip the nylon gear, but you don't trash the entire motor. So I'm wondering if maybe the controller could have like a sacrificial part. So if you blow a certain section, you could just swap that out and put a new one in to repair it rather than having junk the whole thing. Uh, if I was doing, if I was doing the wiring on a controller, I, I'd like it to be much, much more versatile than is currently the case with, with a lot of them. Um, if we look at the Tramper, right, it has three battery connections coming out of this side and it has three phase connections uh, coming out of this side. And they've done it so they can use like really flexible wires um, and make it more easy to manipulate, which is fine. It's just, I think they could have made this a little bit bigger and have these kind of routed out in like a much more user-friendly way, like maybe having them coming out the back here, you know, uh, in a sealed section, like, and not make it that much thicker either, either to do that really. Um, and if we look at the, the ASI one, um, the way they have the communication connections, they kind of stick up like this. And that means that everything kind of comes straight out. So if you're trying to mount this on a flat surface, it's kind of difficult to do so. Um, we actually made our own connections to make that easier to send them down this way. Uh, it's the same with the, uh, with the fire driver here. It's already a pretty chunky beast. And then you have this sticking out there. And if you're trying to get this, you know, put in onto an e-bike, actually this one's a bit more flexible, but uh, if you're trying to get it on an e-bike, it's not, it's not ideal to have this coming out the side there. So um, it would be nice to see the controller with a bit more flexibility in, in terms of the wiring. Um, I'd like to do some stuff with, with heat sinking on a controller to make it as versatile as possible and give people as many options as possible to add like additional heat sinking or maybe even some, some water cooling. Um, the case I made for the best looked to, to machine eventually in aluminum some additional heat sinking to go here. And the VESC actually has these six bolt points or hole points here on the back of the heat sinking. And that would actually make it quite easy to put on additional heat sinking. I think these are M5 bolts that you can just screw straight in. So you could put a plate on there and you could put uh, a plate with some water cooling on there. And then you could actually maybe put this well inside of the, uh, the bike or the vehicle. And that would alleviate some of the fact that it's not that it's not waterproof at all. Um, but yeah, giving people as many options as possible with the heat sinking to put additional heat sinking on, I think would be, be a really good idea with, with the control. Another thing I do is to design it so it has as many options for people to mount it onto the bike or the vehicle as possible. And then you can use the controller or the same controller in as many different scenarios as possible. Take the, um, the ASI one, right? I have to actually take screws and build screws out of this in order to bolt parts on to then attach it to bikes and vehicles. And I should probably keep my mouth shut because I make money doing that. But um, if I was going to do a controller, I would have lots more mounting and bolt points already built into the heat sinking, already built in to the structure of it that would make it easier to put it where you want to put it. Um, the, uh, the fire driver one here has four, four holes that you could use bolts, um, but they're not particularly easy to use because they're so very close to the plastic body. So maybe you'd have to use some kind of a, a standoff or something um, to get them onto a frame. Um, but yeah, I mean, the controller, if I was doing the design, it would have as much versatility built into it to let you use it with loads and loads of, of different vehicles. In terms of kind of security and anti-theft, I mean, the controller is, it's the brains of the vehicle. So I'd like to see much more done in terms of anti-theft in the controller. Like, so the ability to code the controller to a particular motor, code it to somebody's phone. Basically use things like GPS tracking modules. I mean, you can put a GPS thing in a $300 camera. So you should be able to put one in a thousand dollar controller and then basically make it as difficult as possible for someone to steal a bike, easy as possible to recover it 
and as undesirable as possible to steal it in the first place. And I think you can build an enormous amount of that into a controller. So that's about it for, for controllers. Um, if you have ideas and you want to have a chat, post them in the comments. And um, you can also join our Discord community and have a chat on there. Um, huge thank you to all the, the channel members. You helped to make all of this possible and very much appreciate it. And thank you to everybody else for watching the channel. And I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers.